Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome at the English news program here at Ora News. And now, the night's news. Two months after the statement of Foreign Minister Ditmir Bushati that the prosecution should investigate the sea agreement with Greece, the investigation group has reacted. Sources from the prosecution of Tirana suggest that a criminal proceeding is recorded for the pact, which the Constitutional Court anonymously overturned because it violated the country's constitution. Sources explain that the period of two months served for the prosecution to gather information, from which it is concluded that there were violations of the law from the Albanian negotiating team during the drafting of the agreement. The same sources stated for Ora News that the 11 members of the negotiating team will be called from the prosecution to clarify their position on the drafting of the agreement, which was considered from the Supreme Court of our country with serious violations to the Constitution and the International Convention of the United Nations Law of the Sea of 1982. It is believed that the prosecution will ask the chief negotiator, Ferit Hoxha, the rear Krista Jerveni, who at the time was the vice chief of the general staff, the former general secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Gazmen Durdio, and eight other people of the negotiating team are also part of the list of those who will be asked regarding this issue. The agreement between Greece and Albania for the borders between the two countries was signed on the 26th of January in 2010 in Tirana. The pact was signed by the two foreign ministers of that time, the Greek minister Dora Bakoyanis and Luzim Basha, who is currently the leader of the opposition. The agreement of April 2010 caused strong political debates. The Socialist Party, which at that time was in the role of the opposition, complained about this agreement to the Constitutional Court, where it was overturned as pact between the two countries. A strong debate was opened at the civil society, which led to numerous protests. Even today, specialists claim that hundreds of square miles of sea were given to the Greek state, and doing so, the Albanian's territorial sovereignty was affected. When 40 days have passed from the murder of the banker Artan Santo, the prosecution has not yet taken any security camera footage. Although the prosecution has asked for the footage, the police have not yet made them available. The investigation team set up for the murder of Artan Santo wants to verify the path followed by the two perpetrators, since there are strong doubts that they did not leave Tirana. The prosecution also wants to confirm if both of the perpetrators managed to escape to Fushkuche of Lach, since this was the first claim of the police. After retrieving the camera footage, the prosecution expects to have more detailed information about the route followed by the motorbike after the moment of the murder. The investigation team continues its work intensively, even though the issue appears quite complex, as there are a lot of evidence at the crime scene. The work of the prosecution is now focused on the drugs seized in Montenegro. During his testimony, one of the Colombians apprehended from the police mentioned a commercial bank which would transfer the money, and that's why investigators think that both of these crimes may be related to one another. However, the investigators are still following other tracks, which are mainly related to the profession of Artan Santo and conflicts he might have had before being murdered. The investigation team has also taken in consideration the fact that he was a shareholder in some businesses in Albania and Kosovo, and this is another track of investigation in which the prosecution is currently being focused on. Crime stroke today the city of Berat. A 42-year-old woman died in the hospital of the city after being violated from her husband. The grave event occurred on today's evening at Ura Vaigurore. Tomor Sejo, 45 years old, hit his wife, Mimosa, with hard objects. The 42-year-old woman was immediately sent to the hospital of Berat, but due to the severe injuries and despite the efforts of the doctors, she passed away. According to the results of the autopsy, a poisonous substance called photoxin was found in the woman's body. It is suspected that she consumed it under the threat of her husband. The causes of this serious event still remain unclear, even though the police suspect that jealousy was the cause. The police have already arrested the perpetrator. On their part, the neighbor stated that lately the couple had some problems. 
for the psychologist, the victim was violated for years, but she never reported her husband. It is believed that the 45-year-old man, Tomor Sejo, is a person with criminal record. Three years ago, he was convicted of attempted murder after trying to kill his brother. For this crime, he was sentenced with two years of imprisonment. The Democratic Party returned to the objection of the decision of the government to record the identification number of mobile phones, also known as IME. The chairman of the Democratic Party, Luzim Basha, during a media statement called the decision as anti-constitutional and as an attempt of the Prime Minister Edi Rama to brutally access to the life and privacy of the Albanians. In this way, Rama seeks to brutally enter into the life and privacy of Albanians to control their lives, to establish a registry with the confidential data of the Albanians killing privacy guaranteed by laws for Albanians. Edi Rama, after capturing some independent institutions, having cast the net to catch the judiciary, after establishing the Bureau of Investigation, seeks to enter to the lives of Albanians, said Basha. This government's decision was appealed by the Democratic Party to the Constitutional Court, and while waiting for the court's decision, Luzim Basha invites the citizens to react with defiance. Albanians should react with defiance, to reject with contempt, not to submit their personal information, to take a stand and not to submit their data, said the head of the Democrats. He made an appeal for the operators of mobile phone service as well. Companies should respect the constitution of the Republic of Albania and should not submit to a dirama the data of the citizens. Otherwise, they will face charges from the Democratic Party and the citizens, concluded the leader of the Democratic Party, Luzim Basha. International Mobile Equipment Identity, also called AMA, serves on the GSM network to identify a mobile device and in many times to stop the theft of these devices because, through this number, the holder may report it as stolen and then to block to the company that provides the telephone service. The Minister of Innovation, Milena Harito, accused the opposition claims that by registering the EMEI code for mobile phones, the citizens will be intercepted. In response to the accusations of the leader of the Democratic Party, Luzim Basha, Minister Harito said that the decision to register the EMEI code has nothing to do with the privacy of citizens. The government has the duty to stop the smuggling of mobile phones, and all mobile phones that enter in Albania must pay taxes. EMA code is the same code as the car. It is the same like saying that through the car number, the government controls who is the driver. We want renaissance and not destruction, and we want equality before the law. The leader of the Democratic Party, Luzim Basha, is really good for saying empty words. He should ask those who voted him for mayor, and you will understand that he has done nothing in these three years except worse, concluded Minister Harito. A day after the publication of the report to verify universities, the Minister of Education, Lindita Nicola, held a meeting with the heads of universities, which were given recommendations for improvement. Minister Nicola said that the government and the Ministry of Education are determined to go to the bottom of the reform. According to her, the report is only the first step to removing the decayed part of the higher education system. We think we have done the right thing by seeing through the future of our children. I assure you that we are following along with measures to manage all this situation that I would call an emergency situation related to the continuation of the studies of the students of 18 institutions whose license was revoked. We have a concrete plan to register them in our institutions of higher education. The process began in October, said the minister. Measures proposed by the Ministry of Education and Sports to institution of higher education are divided into revoke of license and suspensions. The difference between them lies in the fact that those that are proposed for revocation of license will not have any chance to save from the situation they are. Meanwhile, for the universities proposed for suspension of their license, the Ministry of Education has left some tasks and criteria to be met. In case they are met, the suspension will be repealed.
after the meeting with university leaders who continue their activity under some conditions, Minister Nicola met with university leaders whose activity was suspended. She said that education is not a business but must first provide quality, adding that the license will be restored immediately after verifying that these institutions fulfilled the conditions. The Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama, said that he will put an end to the pyramid of education and that this time the law will act without any tolerance in the higher education system. The disgraceful history of the rise of financial pyramids in education and the market of false diplomas will end once and for all. The law will act with zero tolerance and law enforcement authorities must act in order to bring before justice all those who have deceived the public and robbed parents and students for many years, said the Prime Minister today. Prime Minister Rama also said that the new chapter that was opened yesterday with a public report of the lawfulness of universities will be written with determination. Students of those universities that will be closed will have a second chance under the auspice of the Ministry of Education, said Prime Minister Edi Rama. Prime Minister Rama warned that all those people who have defrauded with the private universities will face justice. In a post on the social network Facebook where he wrote for the measures taken a day earlier for private institutions of higher education, Prime Minister Rama says that the law will operate without any tolerance and the legal institutions will do their job in bringing to justice all those who for years robbed parents and students. The head of the government says that the rebirth of the university starts by the collapse of each pyramid. The new chapter that was opened with a public report of legality, according to him, will be written with full transparency, national accountability and professional and legal determination. In the end, Prime Minister Edi Rama guarantees the students of the universities that will be closed that the Ministry of Education will take care to give them a second chance. The chairman of the Democratic Party and also the mayor of Tirana, Lucim Basha, accused the majority for the decision to close 18 private institutions of higher education and several branches of public universities. From the assembly for the election of local leaders of the Democratic Party of the units 5, 7 and 8, Mayor Basha said that the government's decision has caused a huge psychological shock to students and a financial burden to their parents. The closure of universities was made suddenly, without any warning and without transparency. The incompetence and irresponsibility of this government is having its effect on the future lives of the Albanians. The education system needs improvement. Even the University of Tirana, that has a longer experience, needs improvement, stated the mayor of Tirana and the leader of the Democratic Party, Luzim Basha. We are not against the education reforms to make more quality, but we do not need empty words. Basha further said that the opposition is not against the reform, but it opposes what it considers reforms for the benefit of the pair of Rama Meta. The closure of universities is a case of pure corruption for clientelist purposes by the pair Rama Meta. The same scheme is being used in health, order, economy, pensions, and with the agreement with CHES. In the absence of full transparency, Rama and Meta seek to increase their benefits in the same in the name of pseudo reforms, but we will save Albania from the clutches of crime that Rama and Meta enter it. Facing this situation, the Democratic Party will be well prepared with the best people and the right alternative, said the head of the Democrats. The Democratic Party continued on the 26th day to denounce the silence of Prime Minister Edi Rama for violence in the Parliament, referring to the case of Deputy Gens Strazimiri. In a media outlet from the headquarters of the Democratic Party, the Deputy Helidon Bushati accused Prime Minister Edi Rama of using violence instruments to silence the opposition. The Democratic Party went on with accusations against the socialist member Arben Doka. According to it, his certificate is filled with crime. Bushati emphasized that although Rama asked for a name, again he gives no explanation. 
26 days ago, the opposition was violated within Parliament with the order of Edirama. And today, after 26 days, Prime Minister Edirama has not found any minute to react for this. These days, all learned with evidence and documents who are the instruments of violence that Rama used in trying to silence the opposition. Seven years in prison for kidnapping and sexual exploitation. This is a certificate of the socialist member of the parliament, Arben Doka, who strikes and threatens the representatives of the Democratic Party. Not a single word from Edirama, even though he was the one who demanded a name, demanded evidences for the incrimination of the parliament. Prime Minister Edirama opened the door of parliament to the person convicted of serious offenses by removing from the list of deputies two women candidates, concluded the member of the Democratic Party, Helidon Bushati. Police and military forces have launched an operation this morning to remove the aircraft that struck on the beach of Divyaka while attempting to transport drugs to the neighboring state. The operation started this morning by military forces and 15 police officers of Lushnya Police Department who started to dismantle the vehicle to send it then to Tirana. On the 10th of May, the small plane stuck to the beach of Divyaka where it will be loaded with drugs. 460 kilos of marijuana was seized in a vehicle along with the plane. Police arrested the Italian pilot, Giorgio Riformato, and the 35-year-old man, Saimir Bayrami, who are facing charges of drug trafficking. For the second day in a row, a group of people gathered in front of the Bank of Albania Environments, demanding the removal of the governor Ardian Fulani after the theft of $7.1 million from the central bank. Initially, they set a series of placards at the main door of the provisional headquarters of the Bank of Albania, through which they required the removal of Fulani. Protesters, as a day ago, demanded the end of the silence of the ruling majority and the opposition for what happened at the Bank of Albania. According to them, the silence of the important actors of Albanian politics is indirectly a clean protection for Governor Ardian Fulani. The opposition coalition in Kosovo, LDK, AK, and Incentive say that the institutional vacuum series that exists in the institutions of Kosovo after all these years of bad governance is seriously damaging institutions and the country. According to the coalition, corruption affairs still continue in the last days of this government in office. According to the opposition, the fact that the PDK has addressed to the Constitutional Court and the desire to secure power, not through in a parliamentary majority, but through this court, is another testimony that this government is irresponsible. In spite of the legal process that we are in, public administration is obliged to show professionalism and responsibility. We invite permanent secretaries and directors to increase the dynamic of management and not allow this institutional vacuum to be reflected in the lives of the citizens, reads the joint press statement of the opposition. The leaders of the opposition also revealed some of the details of the program of this governing coalition. In this context, say that it's very important to stop bad governing practices and secure a smooth transition of power. Nevertheless, the coalition says that the needs of the citizens of Kosovo must go beyond the measures to stop bad governing. The citizens of Kosovo need law and order, economic development, better education and better health services. Corruption practices must stop once and for all, reads the press statement of LDK, AAK and Incentive. Among others, the coalition said that the integration of Kosovo in European Atlantic structures is a priority. Our objective is to integrate Kosovo in Euro-Atlantic institutions. The entire program shall be focused on this. We will not blame the others for our work. All state mechanisms will be engaged in making a European Kosovo, hence the press statement issued by the opposition bloc.
Ebola epidemics, which since February has claimed the lives of 700 people in Western Africa and which is considered to be as one of the most dangerous epidemics, does not risk at expanding in Kosovo. But in case this happens, Ministry of Health, along with the World Health Organization and National Institute of Public Health, is prepared and has taken all the necessary measures. According to Faik Hoti, spokesman of the Ministry of Health, there's no danger for a massive outbreak of Ebola, and he stressed that this epidemic is only transmitted in aerial ways. In fact, based on the development of the epidemic in some Western African countries, no massive outbreak is predicted in other countries, given that in, in contract to other viruses, Ebola is only transmitted through the air. Nevertheless, the World Health Organization has recommended for all health services around the world to be prepared and to engage their capacities and be ready to face eventual cases. For now, WHO has not recommended extreme measures, a quarantine or anything like this, said Hote. Hote said that the National Institute of Public Health is also able to take preventive measures, starting by health education and strengthening of different capacities. He also says that it's important not to spread panic among the population. Meanwhile, the head of the World Health Organization in Kosovo, Skander Sula, says that Ebola has spread in West Africa and that there's no danger for this epidemic to be spread in Kosovo. For the moment, there's no danger for the spreading of this epidemic because this epidemic has only spread in four countries of West Africa region. In spite of this, we have issued our recommendations to the institutions of Kosovo to take the necessary measures, concluded Sula. War crime prosecutors are investigating the retired Yugoslav Army General Director Dragan Zivanovic on suspicion that he did not prevent the murders of 118 ethnic Albanian civilians in Kosovo in 1999. The Serbian war crimes prosecution said on Tuesday that it was launching the probe to establish whether Zivanovic, the former commander of the Yugoslav Army 125th Brigade, was responsible for war crimes against ethnic Albanians in the Kosovo village Tuska, Pavljan, Ljubenic and Zahac in April and May 1999. Zivanovic allegedly did nothing to prevent the murders of at least 118 civilians and the destruction of Albanian homes and property in the four villages. The prosecution's investigation order said that Zivanovic gave the Yugoslav's army 177th intervention squad the command to search and clean up the villages. It alleged that Zivanovic knew that members of the squad would attack and kill civilians, drive people from their homes and destroy the village. In February this year, nine former members of the Yugoslav Army 177th Intervention Squad were convicted of killing over 100 Albanian civilians during the attacks on the four villages. The judge, Snezana Nikolic Garotic, said that the men expelled civilians from their houses, killing men and forcing women and children to leave the village. The bodies of those killed were set on fire, so their remains could never be found while their houses were burnt, so those expels could not come back, the judge added. Zivanovic was the superior officer to three of the convicted men, Toplika Miljanovic, Miljoko Nikolic, and Dejan Bulatovic. All three were jailed for 20 years. The judge said that the fighters were not paramilitaries, as was suggested by the prosecution at the beginning of the trial, but regular members of the Yugoslavian army, who all had military ID cards and received salaries from the army. And that was the News English edition prepared for the day. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Good night.